Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how you can edit your photos in three simple steps inside of Lightroom. I totally understand that the entire photo editing process can be pretty complicated. So today, I wanna to try and shed some light, break down a little bit of the workflow and the process behind a good photo edit, and uh, let you in on a handful of little secrets as well. So without further ado, let's dive into today's photo edit. Let's get this video started. Step number one is all about correcting our image and taking our image from a raw image to something that we are a little bit more happy with. The whole idea here is we are gonna be changing the shadows, the highlights, and the overall color tone of the image if necessary. So to do that, we wanna make our way over to the develop tab, which I have already opened up in the top right-hand corner, and then open up the basic tab over here on the right, and we're pretty much gonna be staying here for the entire first step. So if we check out the photo that we are editing here, myself in the photo, I'm a little bit dark and the sky behind me is incredibly bright. At this stage, we have to ask ourselves, what type of image do we want? Do I want to be silhouetted in this shot? Do I want to recover all the information and data in the sky? Or do I want to find a little bit of a balance of both? Do I want the sky to still be bright? And do I want me to be bright? Or do I want something completely different? Well, for this shot here, and at least in my opinion, what I'm looking to do is brighten myself up but keep the sky super bright. And that's because if I reduce the brightness of the sky, things are gonna start looking really strange and a little bit unbelievable. But if I brighten myself up just a little bit, things could still be pretty believable. So to be able to do this, I'm gonna make my way over to the shadow slider here on the right hand side and look at increasing it just a little bit. Now, if we go crazy all the way up, I'm pretty much as bright as the sky now, so that's far from ideal. We wanna find a little bit of a middle ground in between where we started and maximum. So if we just dial this back off a little bit, I would say maybe about that 25, 30 mark looks pretty good to me. If we boost up the shadows a lot, we're gonna lose a lot of that natural contrast that's all already in this shot, so we definitely don't want to do that. So now that we have affected our shadows just a little bit, I'm also gonna make my way over to the exposure tab and just increase this a touch. Instead of just affecting one area of the shot, for example, like the shadow slider did, which only affected the dark part of our image, the exposure slider is going to affect everything. Whether it's bright, whether it's dark, it doesn't matter. And what I wanna do here is just increase it a little bit to keep that sky really bright, but then to also bring me up up just a little more. So what that's gonna look like is just grabbing the exposure slider and slightly increasing this. I'm really not worried about the sky being too bright behind me. I actually shot this photo, well, I didn't shoot this photo. I had a man to take this photo of me, obviously, if I'm in the photo. However, when this shot was taken, the whole idea was to keep that sky super bright and just blow it out and sort of let it be nice and warm in the background. I wasn't interested in keeping any of the details of the sky. So overall now, I would say our image is looking pretty good. Things look fairly balanced. Nothing looks unbelievable either. I would say this image is quite true to eye. So we're pretty much ticking all the boxes for step number one. However, there's one last, actually two last things we need to do. The first one is check our white balance. So this is where your image could be looking a little bit too blue or a little bit too warm, or maybe you want it to be looking blue or warm, but it's not there just yet. For example, in this image, Things are gonna be pretty warm. This was shot right at sunset, so I really wanna lean into those warm tones. Overall, I would say that our white balance is looking pretty good. However, if yours isn't, there's a couple of things that you can do to be able to correct your white balance. The first one is to just eye it. It's to just look at the image, move the white balance sliders around and see the results that you get. However, we probably both know that that's not gonna give you the most accurate results. So there are two other ways to do it as well. The first one is to open up the little drop down menu here that says as shot, and then you can just hit auto. And this is gonna look at your image and then determine what the white balance should be. As you can see, it doesn't always nail it. I think this looks disgusting, to be honest with you. So I am going to be command Zing that. I'm gonna undo that. The other way we can correct our white balance is by coming over to this dropper here. And then we wanna look for something that should be pure gray, pure white, or pure black. In this shot here, there aren't too many things that should be pure gray or pure white or pure black. However, if I really want to look for something, we could probably choose my shoes right here. These should be pretty white. So what I'm gonna do is just click on my shoe. And as you can see there, we have now got our white balance adjusted. This has made things a little bit too warm for my liking. So I'm going to undo that once again. I really like the white balance of this shot. 
So for this one, I'm gonna leave it as is. Now the last thing on the to-do list when it comes to the correction side of things is our crop. We wanna make sure that our horizons are straight, buildings are straight, and we're cropping with the correct crop ratio depending on where our image is going. For example, if this was gonna be a YouTube thumbnail, I wouldn't be cropping it to four by five for the Instagram feed, I'd be cropping it to 16 by nine for the YouTube thumbnail aspect ratio. For this shot here, I'm gonna let this go on the Instagram feed. So we're gonna open up the crop tool here. We're gonna open up this little drop down menu. We're gonna select four by five. And now we get to decide where your subject wants to be in the shot. I don't wanna chop my foot off in the bottom right hand corner. So I wanna leave a little bit of room there. Thankfully for this shot, I don't need to correct any horizons or any buildings. Everything looks pretty straight. I'm more or less centered in the shot. I might wanna move it over a little bit like that. But this crop, is looking pretty good. Step number two, which is a little bit of a newer workflow that I've recently developed, but has completely changed my Lightroom editing workflow, and I'm really excited to share it with you. This is going to be using my AI toolkit for Lightroom. Before I dive into it though, just in case you like what you're about to see and you wanna get your hands on some great AI Lightroom tools for Lightroom, you can go to the first link in the description and check out my Lightroom AI toolkit. But enough talking, let's dive in to exactly what this can do. So the whole idea with these packs is they do exactly what they say they're gonna do on the title. So let's have a look at these for example. If I wanted to make my eyes pop for this shot, I probably don't need it because I'm quite far away from the camera. I would just click on the eye pop preset and then it would make my eyes pop. So on and so forth. I could go through the list of 24 presets with you, but I think you get the idea. So the first one I want to do for this shot is if we have a look through here, let's look at Let's look at a dramatic vignette for our vertical shot. This is gonna help our subject stand out a lot more from the shot by darkening all the sides of our image. Now, the really cool thing about these presets is that you can increase or decrease the intensity of them. So I can come over to the intensity slider here, and if I wanted less of a vignette on my shot, all I have to do is decrease the intensity slider. And if I want more of it, all I have to do is increase the intensity of it. I'm pretty happy with how things look at about 100. We might back it off just a little bit, 85 looks pretty good to me. With that out of the way, let's move into the rest of this workflow. The first thing I wanna do is blur our background. This might take a little bit of time as Lightroom is analyzing our shot and then blurring the background accordingly, making sure me, the subject in the shot, isn't gonna be blurry and I'm pretty happy with how the results are looking. Once again, I can increase the intensity or I can decrease it. I think we might back this off just a touch. We were already shooting this at f2.8 on a full frame sensor, so I'm pretty happy with how things look. Let's also look at enhancing the light a little bit in this shot. It's gonna make our sky behind me a little brighter. Once again, I'm just gonna reduce this ever so slightly. And then we also might have a look at we also might do soften background. This just makes the background a little bit softer and dreamier, which is a look I absolutely love. I'm now gonna make my way up to subject pop and I'm gonna apply this. I do find that from time to time when I start to stack a load of these AI masks on top of each other, Lightroom tends to slow down just a little bit until it applies the preset and then it speeds back up to its normal pace. All right, so with that out of the way, I would say we're getting pretty close to the end of our AI toolkit workflow. However, I wanna add just a handful more. I'm then going to come down here and add dark and bottom of image to just give us a little bit more depth. I'm then going to, of course, play around with the intensity of this. I might increase it ever so slightly. I'd say that's looking good. And then just for good measure, we're also going to remove the noise from our shot. And I'm also going to sharpen me just a little bit. And I can do just a little bit by adjusting our intensity slider at the top. Now I'm looking at this image and I don't think I'm popping enough from the background just yet. So I wanna do two more things. I'm gonna come in here and add a dramatic vignette for the vertical images. And then I'm gonna look at increasing this just a little bit. I'm then gonna come back up to here and hit subject pop. This is gonna make me brighter, but the background a little bit darker. I would imagine once this loads, I'm gonna be a little bit washed out, but we can look at dialing back this effect just a touch. And here we are. So exactly how I thought, I look a little bit washed out. So all I'm gonna do is dial this back a little bit. If we go up way too much, you can see things get out of hand quite a lot. So we're gonna back this off maybe to about 40 and I would say things are now looking pretty good. If I have a look at a quick before 
And after, we've made some pretty big changes in just a few masks and a handful of adjustments to the basic tab. And guess what? That's step number two out of the way. We've now corrected our image. We've then gone through and used the AI masking toolkit to add a few more stylistic touches to our shot. Now it's time for step number three, which in my opinion is the best part. And this is where we get to start to add our color grade and overall look and vibe to the shot. And the way I'm gonna do this is once again through presets. I really wanna highlight and show you exactly how effective presets can be when you use them inside of a good workflow. So let's do exactly that. I'm gonna make my way over to my master collection here, which is my blues pack, golden mood, orange and teal peaks and portraits. And if I have a look at this shot, I'm thinking to myself, okay, what kind of look am I after? Definitely opening up the golden pack, definitely opening up the portraits pack, and just for fun, let's open up the blues pack and let's see what we've got. So let's kick things off. All I'm gonna do is hover over each preset, and kind of move my mouse down and see what ones I do and don't like. Blues one, maybe a little bit too intense. Blues two, okay, I'd say blues two is looking pretty nice. Blues three, definitely not. Four, mm, five. Oh, blues five is quite nice. Blue six, okay, the blues pack looks all right. We've definitely got some good choices in there. Let's have a look at the golden pack. Definitely like the way golden one looks, that's for sure. Ooh, golden three is definitely my style. Golden four looks pretty nice. Golden five, golden six, seven. Oh, seven's a bit intense. We might be able to dial that down. Golden eight, oh, that was golden eight. All right, onto the portraits pack and then we'll have to make our decision. Ooh, I really like portraits one. Two looks good, three, four, five, five looks nice, six, seven. Okay, I think there was one in golden that I really liked. Mm, maybe it was blues. A lot of the time, I think it was blues two. Was blues two the one I was after? Or blues five, I think it was blues five. Blues five, oh, this is by far the preset for this shot. If we have a look at a little intensity slider move. So if we go to the left, if we go to the right, wow, even increasing this makes this image quite nice right there. I would say things are looking very, very good. And now a quick before and after, and this image has completely changed. I would say a lot of the time, the difference between getting your presets right and wrong is just taking the time to go through and choose what one works for your image. For example, I'm looking at this shot here, thinking that the golden or the portraits pack is gonna be for this shot. And then it turns out that Blues 5 absolutely nailed it. And there we go, that's step three wrapped up and out of the way. And that also concludes this video. Usually I don't go in depth and show you my preset editing workflow. However, when it comes to simplifying the Lightroom editing process, this is exactly how I would do it. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, let me know down in the comments below. If you're new around here, a subscribe would mean the absolute world. And if you wanna continue learning about photography, photo editing, and so on, you can go ahead and check out this video here and I'll see you over there.